Hello everybody and welcome to the Blitz CME channel. I'm Brent Scott and today's video I want to show you is a comparison to a 1990 Corvette stock air intake system and a modified system that I built, cold air intake system. And I actually flow bench tested these. Um, so the project started out as when uh, I put a 383 into the Corvette and it's approximately about a 500 horsepower, give or take. So my concern was with the stock air intake box is it would be too restrictive to feed a higher horsepower engine. And being that the original L98 engine that was put into this car was about 245 horsepower, I didn't think that the air box would have enough flow to basically feed an engine that's basically putting out twice as much horsepower. So I did some research uh, before I even started this project. Um, I looked at some of the, st the stuff that was currently out there in the market. Uh, the, you know, there's one or two that weren't too bad systems. The Vortex Rammer, which just seemed like a newer one, kind of had a cool design to it, but it had a seemed like it had a small element of a filter. And plus the way it locates it, uh, they pulled the air from underneath, which goes into the radiator. Um, I'll go into some details on that later in the videos, why I, a couple things, why I didn't really like it. But the other one with the SLP, uh, was kind of, see, was kind of an expensive intake, uh, to me for what you got for it. And it also looked restrictive. So after research, I saw some other guys on the forums of what they did is they made some custom intakes for their setup and I came up with building something which is similar to what's on the C5 Corvette. The bare ram power duct with the Y configuration that goes into two cone cell filters, six inch filters. So in my effort in building this, I have my flow bench, I decided just for kicks, hey, why don't I flow uh, what the stock air box flowed at and then see what the comparison is on my new custom setup. So before I go into too much details on that, what I'd like to do now is show you the videos of testing stock intake system and my cold air intake system. I think you'll be pretty surprised uh, how the numbers came out. So let's watch the video and then we'll circle back and I'll give you some more review on my thoughts on the overall project. Okay, so here's the video. Here's the stock C4 Corvette airbox with a paper filter in there. It flows about 12, 12 CFM, 1213, give or take. Now here's the modified one that I did with the, the ducting and the Y. It's got basic generic filters on there. It's about a 1280 CFM. And the last one here, it's flowing at 1290. So this is a similar, uh, with the bare ramp air box and the Y, but it has a more of a premium filter on there, the K&N filter, as you can see. All right, cool. Well, hopefully you like my videos of the flow bench testing that I did. So let's just circle back a little bit and talk about what you just saw. So on test one, which is the stock intake with a paper element filter in there, and also it's a dirty filter. So it actually might flow better than this, but it flowed about 12, 13 CFM. Test number two, this is with my kind of modified duct, very ram duct, the Y, but it's got a generic filter that actually came with the kit when I started building it. Flowed at 1283 CFM. And then the last test I did is the same thing, but I used more of a premium filter, a K&N six inch filter. As you can see, it's a bit more, looks like it, it would flow better a little bit more improved from the, the generic cone version. But as you can tell, if you look at the two numbers, it really only flowed about seven CFM difference. So kind of interesting. But in summary of it all, uh, you know, 12, 13 CFM for the stock versus the best 1290, we only really improve 77 CFM. Would I consider that a great gain? No. Not at all. Maybe even the cylinder head, yeah, if you got 77 CFM more, that would be something to get excited about. But overall, in an air filter airbox configuration, that's not really 
enough to make a big difference. So you might say, well, okay, well, what, you know, what would you need to flow? You know, how would I know that my stock area and take that 1213 CFM would be sufficient enough? Well, let's talk about the theory. The theory is in a V8 engine, you basically at all times, you have two valves fully wide open and you have about a half a valve in the open position in theory. So, I mean, obviously, you know, there's different valves. They may be in different openings positions, but overall, that's just a good rough generic number to calculate too. So in your stock engine that, that came in this car, the L98, it had a 113 aluminum casting and basically the all outflow, let's say the perfect world, this thing flows at 220 CFM, which they typically don't uh, because the cam doesn't lift to that. But anyways, let's just say it's a perfect world and it does. So once one intake valve in full open position flows at 220. Okay, well, let's times it to times two and a half, which we basically come up with 550 CFM. And let's just give a fudge factor like it's more efficient. So let's add a 20% fudge factor onto it. So we come up with 660 CFM. Well, ask yourself, your stock intake flows at 12, 13 CFM and your heads are calling, you know, your engine's calling for 660 CFM. Well, that basically says, yes, the stock intake system is more than enough to supply the demand into the engine. So now here's the other scenario, my scenario. So my engine is, like I said, is about a 500 horsepower setup. Now I flow bench test this, uh, the heads with the intake on there and the throttle body. And the cam lift that's on it is about 580 inches. So basically what it comes down to is with a full open on one valve, it comes out to 250 CFM. All right. And also, if you want to know that with the intake and the throttle body being on there, it's about a 6% drop of efficiency. But anyways, let me get back to it. So we have 250 CFM for one cylinder to be able to feed a cylinder to the, uh, you know, the optimal power. So we times that times two valves and a half being full open and we come up with 625 CFM. And let's give the fudge factor of another 20% on top of that, just, just to put icing on the cake, right? So that comes out to 750 CFM. Well, circle back to your stock intake at 12, 13 CFM. So in theory, my stock intake, I could leave on there and it's sufficient enough to to feed this new modified engine without it suffering from the intake. So you may ask yourself now, it's like, okay, well, it's obviously really not worth the money uh, to build an aftermarket intake. I mean, give or take, basically the, the setup that you saw that I built, I built that for roughly about 200 bucks. And as you see the other aftermarket ones, they can be like, you know, like 300, dollars on average or or maybe more so you, you might think well okay is there anything we can do with to make an improvement that would be worthwhile or do you just leave it so the answer is yes and what i'm going to do is i'm going to do a second part of this video and i'm going to show you if i was to do this over again what i would do myself and there's a couple of things I can show you on the car to make some improvements. So please, to, you know, continue to watch this part two of this video and I'll give you some more details on what I would recommend doing.